So now we've come to the stage where we need to design our two program cards. Now these two program cards, they're more of an overview of program cards than they are an actual program card. It's more to meet the assessment criteria than it is to carry out an actual personal training session. What these two program cards have to cover is my four advanced resistance training systems. So in my case, a superset, forced repetitions, eccentric training, and an ascending pyramid. It also needs to cover my two advanced cardiovascular training approaches, so continuous and a fartlek. It also has to demonstrate a variety of CV equipment, so certainly more than one piece of kit. It also has to demonstrate that I've used a variety of resistance machines, free weights, and a core exercise. I also need to show an appropriate warm up and cool down. I need to include either photos of exercises or stick men drawing of exercises for the stretching. I also need to tell them my client's name, the safety checks and special arrangements. So you can see here, this is program card one. It's from week three of the eight week plan and it's days one and two. So day one is the cardiovascular training and day two is the resistance training. I've put a fictional client name in there for you, Simon Goff, although really we know it should have been David Small. I've carried out the safety check, so all gym equipment checked for safe use. Fire exits are checked by the gym team. Any special um, arrangements with my client? Well, David will have to bring a water bottle with him, a sweat towel, and have appropriate training kit. Location of the nearest telephone, gym reception. Location of the nearest first aid kit, gym reception. Duty first aider is the duty manager. Every box on this program card has to be completed. If it doesn't, your assessor will ask you to complete it on the day or when your work is verified before a certificate claim is made, you will need to come back and make changes to your work. So please make sure you fill in every single box. The warm up. So you can see here, mobilizing the neck and the lower back, and then the cardiovascular warm up is the rower. The training system, warm up. The time is five minutes. The RPE is three to five and we're gonna gradually increase the range of movement and the intensity across the five minute window. Teaching points, neck roll and cat camel stretch to mobilize the back. You can see here, I've actually written down at least three teaching points for the rower. You must write teaching points for every single exercise on this program card. Like I said earlier, every single box on this program part card must be complete. So for the rowing, we've got neutral spine, the sequence is legs, arms, arms, then legs with a comfortable breathing pattern. The main CV components. The name of the kit is the rower. The training system is continuous. The time is 15 minutes. The target training zone, so its zone, so the intensity is an RP of seven, which could be about 75% of the maximum heart rate. Teaching points: rowing neutral spine, legs, arms, arms, then legs. With a comfortable breathing pattern, and the intensity is steady because it's an RP of seven, but it's higher than it was in the warm-up because the warm-up only got the client to RP5. The next page, the main resistance section. 
So the resistance training systems here, I've got supersets for some exercises, and we've got forced reps in the final set of the exercise. So if we look at the exercise names here, leg press and deadlift. Leg press is quadricep dominant and a deadlift is glute and hamstring dominant. So they're opposing muscle groups. On the leg press, you can see here that I've put a little star next to leg press. And what that indicates is that in the final set of the leg press, I'm going to put the weight up to a weight where my client needs help. So they're going to need a little bit of help performing the last couple of repetitions. Bench press and bench row, they're opposite movements. Shoulder press and lat pull down, again, they're opposite movements. Tricep extension and bicep hammer curl, they're opposite movements. I've got eight exercises on this program card, so let's count them through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So they're my eight exercises from my program, uh, from my eight week plan. It says here, Forced reps are indicated by a star and they're in the final set. Rest comes after the second exercise in each series. So the rest here comes after the deadlift. Rest here comes after the bench row. Rest here comes after the lat pull down. And rest here comes after the bicep curl. I've named the equipment that we're using. So I've got a leg press machine. I've got deadlift, which is a free weight exercise. I've got bench press, which is a free weight exercise. Bench row, which is a free weight exercise. Shoulder press, which is a machine exercise. Lat pull down, which is a machine exercise. Tricep extension, which is a free weight exercise. And hammer curls, which is a free weight exercise. So straight away there, you can see I've used a variety of cardio, uh, a variety of resistance training machines and free weights. In the sets and reps box, I've got the number of sets that I'm performing, the number of reps, the percentage of one RM. So in the first two working sets, it's 67% of the one RM. In the final working set, to bring about forced reps on these exercises here. It's going to be 75% of the 1RM, meaning my client is going to need a little bit of help to lift that bar up on the concentric phase or down on the concentric phase on lat pull down that I've highlighted there for you. So that's the only one out of those exercises where the concentric phase is on the way down. The tempo is there and the rest periods are there. The teaching points for each exercise have been typed up and placed in the box. The core exercise is the plank. It's a side plank supersetting, body weight is the equipment and using a mat, and the, t the sets and reps are here, so two times 30 seconds, side plank and front plank, and the teaching points for them are in this box here. I've used the upright bike for the cool down, so that gives me a variety of cardiovascular training. The time is five minutes, and the RPE is the reverse of what it was in the warm up. So it's now five to three rather than three to five. The teaching points have been entered here, and they're taken from my manual. I've included diagrams of warm up stretches, 
and I've given a bit of information about what those stretches entail. And I've just copied and pasted these stretches into the warm up stretch box and I've given the time that they're to be held for or the movement. So dynamic stretches, one set of eight reps. If you don't like using a computer, you can just draw those diagrams in in pencil. I've indicated the cool down stretches that we've put in there and you can see I've gone from a seated to a standing position. I've written some notes about activities that can take place out of the gym. And some comments. As long as the client follows the nutritional advice, then they should succeed on this program. So that's my first program, which has two resistance training systems on it and one advanced cardiovascular training system on it. All boxes on that program card have been completed. I've got a logical order of exercises working from bigger to smaller muscles, and the muscle groups are definitely in supersets. The core exercise is there, and the diagrams are included. So now I need to move on to my second program card. And at this stage, it's going to come from the final part of the eight week plan because I need to demonstrate my remaining two resistance training approaches and my remaining cardiovascular training approach. So this time it's from weeks five and seven and the sessions are one and two. So day one is cardio and day two is resistance training. I've got the same safety checks that I had before. I've got the information for the telephone, the first aid kit and the first aider. Now, on our eight week plan or our case study, we're supposed to show a different type of warm up or a variety of warm ups. So you can see here, I've changed the warm up machine to the upright bike. And the reason I've done that is to make sure that I've used different warm ups for my client. Training system is warm up again, time is five minutes, RPE is three to five. And I'm going to gradually increase that RPE over the five minute period. I've got the teaching points for my mobility and the teaching points for my cardiovascular warm up. I've got my CV equipment as the rower for my main workout and my second training system. You can see here I've highlighted it in bold and underlined it. It's a fartlek. The time is 18 minutes. And my RPE is from five to eight. So that's the same RPE that was written down on my eight week plan. It's aerobic and touching upon anaerobic. And I've got the teaching points in here, including that the intensity is varied, but higher than the warm up. I'm now moving on to my resistance training section where I need to show eccentric training on some exercises, not all exercises, and I need to show pyramid training on some exercises. So if it's eccentrics, you can see here, I've summarized that eccentrics have been indicated by a star. So the eccentric exercises that I'll perform are gonna be on a leg press, a bench press, a shoulder press, a lat pull down, and a tricep extension. The exercises that we're gonna use pyramid training on are a deadlift, and you can see here it says pyramid, bench row, and our bicep hammer curl. The equipment is listed and for the eccentrics, for sets and reps, 
We've got 3 times 12. So the first two sets are going to be performed at 67% of the 1RM. I explained earlier in this video where I got that information from. So the Focus Fitness estimated percentage of one rep max sheet. I also said in that section there about 85% of the one rep max will need to be indicated for eccentric training at 12 reps. The tempo is two to two and the rest period is 60 seconds. For the pyramid training, there's one set of 12 reps at 67% of the one RM. There are 60 seconds rest. There's one set at 10 reps, 75% of the one rep max, with 70 seconds rest. And there's a final set of eight reps at 80% of the one rep max with 80 seconds rest. Now remember here, the client doesn't need spotting because these percentage figures are accurate for the amount of reps that the client should be able to perform. The spotting was only relevant on eccentrics in the final set when we put the weight up. And that was only for exercises indicated by a star. The teaching points for each exercise have been included. The core exercise is wood chops. It has the name of the training approach, the equipment, the sets and reps, and the teaching points for the exercise. The cool down, this time rather than it being the upright bike, it's now the rower. The time is there. The target training zone, cool down, RPE, five to three. And it talks here about reducing the intensity across the five minutes. I should also include the teaching points. So I'm gonna go to the rower. If you do have access to a computer, I would suggest that you actually use one because when you're typing out these programs, it can save you quite a lot of time by copying and pasting information like you've just seen there. The diagrams for the stretches, it's okay to use the same diagrams that you used in the first program. As long as you're writing or putting the diagram in and giving an explanation of what's happening. So here, one set of eight reps. If you're interested in these foam roller exercises, speak to your tutor about them. And he or she will show you some videos or some exercises that can help the client. But it's not a requirement of the program. So that's just a little bit extra. Cool down stretches, you can see them here again. And the timings are there. And then if you wanted to write some notes about exercises that could happen outside of the gym, you might be asking the client to perform press ups on a rest day. Additional comments, well this bit here, if it was on the eight week plan, this might be supported by an increase in protein for my client. If it was a weight loss client, you might be saying to them, ensure you are following the eat well plate. So it's always good to put that extra bit of information in there because it means that your client's program is more likely to succeed. Once you've got to the end of that second program, that's your case study pretty much finished.